couldn't have been too dumb. He spelled it right. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> In the early 1970s, the casting process for the TV series Good Times brought together a talented group of actors who would become synonymous with the show. Producer Norman Lear and his team aimed to create a relatable and entertaining sitcom that showcased the experiences of an African-American family living in a Chicago housing project. For the role of Florida Evans, the family's matriarch, Esther Roll, was a natural fit. With her strong stage presence and commanding voice, Roll had already made a name for herself in theater and television. Her previous collaboration with Lear on Maude also worked in her favor. John Amos, who played Florida's husband, James Evans Sr., was chosen for his solid acting background and his ability to portray a stern yet loving father figure. Amos had appeared in various TV shows and films before Good Times, making him a seasoned actor for the part. The Evans children were also carefully cast. Jimmy Walker, who played the charming yet irresponsible JJ, had a background in stand-up comedy and brought a unique energy to the character. His audition reportedly involved ad-libbing jokes, which won over the producers. Janet Jackson, who played the role of Penny, was discovered during a nationwide search for a young actress to play the part. At only 13 years old, Jackson was relatively new to acting, but her natural talent and the chemistry she shared with her co-stars solidified her role in the series. Bernadette Stannis, who played Thelma, the middle child, was chosen for her wholesome and relatable demeanor. Stannis had previously appeared in commercials and small TV roles, making her a promising new talent for the show. Bernie Casey, who played the role of Keith Anderson, was cast later in the series. His character was introduced as a love interest for Florida and a positive male role model for the Evans children. Casey's previous film and television work made him an ideal candidate for the part. Beyond individual auditions, the cast also underwent chemistry tests to ensure that their on-screen relationships would be believable and engaging. The success of Good Times can be attributed to the talented cast and their ability to bring the Evans family to life, capturing the hearts of audiences for generations to come. You saying you're not listening to what goes on in here, lifeguard? <laughs> <laughs> the director of the 1974 TV series Good Times aimed to create a show that was true to life for many American families. They wanted to depict the struggles and joys of a working class family in an urban setting. The director drew inspiration from their own experiences and from the stories of people living in similar circumstances. They worked closely with the writers to ensure the script reflected these realities. The director's style was grounded and natural, focusing on strong character development and relatable situations. They encouraged the actors to bring their own insights to their roles, fostering a collaborative environment on set. This approach helped the show connect with viewers and address relevant social issues of the time. The director also made sure to include moments of humor and warmth balancing the more serious themes of the series. This balance became a defining feature of the show, making it a beloved classic. The director's vision was to tell a meaningful story that viewers could see themselves in, and they succeeded by working hand in hand with a dedicated cast and crew. Do we look like we get room service around here? <laughs> and you should understand. Here we are and here's what we Good Times, a 1974 TV series, has stood the test of time and remains a symbol of the industry for its humor, shocking moments, and emotional depth. Set in a Chicago housing project, it follows the Evans family's struggles and triumphs. One of the most enduring qualities of good times is its relatability. The show tackles real-life issues, from poverty and racism to family dynamics and personal growth. Its ability to balance comedy with serious topics has made it a classic. As for the characters, it's hard to pick a favorite. James Evans, the stern but loving father, or Florida Evans, the resilient matriarch, both leave lasting impressions. And who can forget the wise-cracking, lovable JJ? Now, get ready for some fun facts. Did you know that Good Times was a spin-off of Maud, which was itself a spin-off of All in the Family? Or that the theme song was performed by Jim Gilstrap and Blinky Williams, who also sang for the Jackson Five? There are many more surprising stories and trivia about Good Times, so stay tuned We'd love to hear about your favorite memories or personal experiences related to this iconic TV series. Share them in the comments below. Asking you, can you name this tune? Da, 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 the production of the 1974 TV series Good Times took place in Los Angeles, where the interior sets were built on stage 20 of the CBS Studio Center. 
The set design was a crucial element in creating the Evans family's apartment, reflecting a modest, working-class home in a Chicago housing project. The production team paid attention to the smallest details, such as chipped paint and worn-out furniture, to ensure the set's authenticity. The exterior scenes were filmed at the Kenilworth Avenue apartments in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Baldwin Hills, which doubled as the Chicago housing projects depicted in the show. The production team faced logistical challenges in transporting cast and crew to the location, requiring coordination with local authorities and residents. To capture the series' lively atmosphere, the production team employed innovative techniques, such as using a multi-camera setup. This approach allowed for seamless transitions between different scenes and enabled the actors to play off each other's energy, contributing to the show's dynamic and engaging performances. Despite the constraints of a modest budget, the production team of Good Times managed to create a visually appealing and engaging series that resonated with audiences. The show's set design, filming locations, and innovative production techniques combined to produce a memorable and enduring television series. $110. You got to be kidding. The president may Good Times stands out as a classic sitcom that masterfully blends humor with the realities of life through excellent writing and a strong cast. The show initially planned for Florida Evans, played by the talented Esther role, to be a single mother. However, role advocated for a change, resulting in the creation of James Evans, a firm and strong father figure portrayed by John Amos. This addition provided a balanced portrayal of a complete family unit, challenging the stereotype of absent black fathers. The show enjoyed high viewership and continues to be beloved in reruns. It presented the Evans family as dignified and disciplined, countering the notion that it depicted African Americans negatively. The characters, including the humorous JJ played by Jimmy Walker, were no less respectable than those on contemporary television. Good Times is remembered for its portrayal of a family that, despite financial struggles, remained united and resilient, offering a narrative that resonates with many even today. You don't stand much better chance than we did at the bank. JJ, I know it sounds silly to say cheer up after you've been turned down. The creation of the Good Times score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort between composers and musicians to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the 1974 TV series. The music played a crucial role in enhancing the show's themes of family, resilience, and humor in the face of adversity. Composers and musicians worked diligently to create music that would reflect the diverse experiences of the Evans family and the larger African-American community. The score often featured a blend of genres, such as funk, soul, and gospel, to create a unique sound that resonated with the show's audience. One of the key contributors to the Good Times soundtrack was the legendary musician Isaac Hayes. Hayes, who was already well known for his work on the Shaft soundtrack, brought his signature style to Good Times, creating a memorable and iconic theme song that still resonates with audiences today. The musicians involved in the creation of the Good Times score and soundtrack drew inspiration from the show's characters and storylines. They aimed to create music that would add depth and nuance to the narrative, while also providing a catchy and memorable soundtrack that would enhance the viewing experience. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of the Good Times score and soundtrack recognized the importance of their work in shaping the overall tone and atmosphere of the show. They worked tirelessly to create music that would complement the actors' performances and enhance the emotional impact of each episode. In the end, the Good Times score and soundtrack stand as a testament to the power of music to elevate and enrich the television viewing experience. The music's ability to complement the narrative an emotional tone of the show has left a lasting impact on audiences and continues to be celebrated today. I'm charming, witty, <laughs> brilliant, debona. Uh... In the popular 1970s television series, Good Times, JJ's well known catchphrase evolved over time, transitioning from Die I Know Might to I Know, and finally to You Know, What Can I Say? When answering the phone, he adopted the greeting cello. Janet Dubois portrayed Penny's adoptive mother while John Amos, who played James Evans, shared the stage with Ralph Carter, who played his on-screen son, in a Broadway comedy titled Tough to Get Help. This play, directed by Carl Reiner and written by Steve Gordon, unfortunately closed on its opening night in 1972. It was all Savannah's fault. All right! Wait, 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 wait. The 1974 television series Good Times is known for its powerful scenes that reflect family life and social issues. 
The show's direction often used close-ups to capture the emotions of characters, making the audience feel connected to the Evans family. For example, the scene where Florida breaks down after James' death was directed to focus on her face, highlighting her acting skills, and conveying deep sorrow without words. The actors have shared that these moments were as real to them as to their viewers, often drawing from their own experiences. The cinematography used natural lighting and tight shots within the family's apartment to create a sense of intimacy and realism. These techniques combined with strong performances made scenes memorable and touching, leaving a lasting impression on those who watched them. The filmmakers aimed to tell honest stories that mirrored the lives of many, which is why the show remains significant in television history. Hello! <laughs> this is the love of your life speaking. In the TV show Good Times, which aired in the 1970s, Esther Roll and Janet Dubois were cast as sisters, despite the significant age difference between them. Roll was 25 years older than Dubois, but they were meant to be the same age on the show. The character James, played by John Amos, had a nickname for his son Michael, the militant midget. Meanwhile, JJ, portrayed by Jimmy Walker, called Michael Miguel. These nicknames added a layer of familiarity and humor to the relationships between the characters. He asked me if he could come around here and see my underwear. The TV series Good Times, which aired in 1974, was significant for its portrayal of an African-American family living in a housing project in Chicago. It was one of the first shows to offer a look at the challenges faced by low-income families, addressing issues like poverty, unemployment, and discrimination. The characters, especially James and Florida Evans, became household names and their struggles and joys brought laughter and reflection to many viewers. The show also opened doors for discussions on race, family dynamics, and the social issues of the time. It had a strong influence on television by showing that shows about African American families could be successful, and by paving the way for future series that tackle serious topics with humor and heart. Good Times holds a place in television history for its role in changing how African-American families were depicted on screen. Yeah, you put them all together and they come out obscene. <laughs> yes, Bernadette Stannis, who played Thelma on Good Times, has maintained close relationships with her castmates over the years. The financial stability she enjoys is largely due to her wise money management and the residuals from the show. Jimmy J.J. Walker, known for his role as J.J. Evans, is friends with Cuba Gooding and David Letterman. Interestingly, when he began playing the teenager J.J., Walker was already 26 years old. His enduring friendship with these celebrities and his castmates is a testament to the lasting impact of good times. Come on, elevator comp out, baby. <laughs> Gotta walk up the stairs. The 1974 television series Good Times received a warm reception from audiences for its portrayal of an African-American family living in a Chicago housing project. Critics praised the show for tackling serious social issues with humor and grace. It was particularly noted for Esther Roll's strong performance as Florida Evans and Jimmy Walker's portrayal of her son, JJ, which became a cultural icon for his catchphrase, Dynamite. The series was nominated for several awards, including the Golden Globe for Best TV Series in a Musical or Comedy. These nominations and positive reviews were significant for the cast and crew, affirming their work's value and impact on television at the time. Recognition like this often leads to more opportunities in the industry for those involved. Thank you. I don't believe it. Jeanette Dubois left a lasting mark on television history with her role as Wilona Woods. Her talents extended beyond acting as she lent her voice to the theme song of another beloved series, The Jeffersons, which she also helped create. Recognized for its cultural impact, the show joined the ranks of the greatest television series ever, as voted by TV Guide. Meanwhile, Esther Roll's passing brought together her former cast members, with the notable absence of Jimmy J.J. Walker, highlighting the bonds formed during their time on the show. Didn't you tell us we're wrong? During the filming of Good Times, the cast and crew faced many challenges but also shared joyful moments. Esther Roll, who played Florida Evans, was known for her warm spirit on set, often lifting everyone's mood. Jimmy Walker, famous for his catchphrase Dino Might, as JJ would keep the crew laughing with his jokes, even during long shooting days. The actors were close, like a real family, supporting each other through personal and professional highs and lows. 
They worked hard to bring stories to life that reflected real issues, which sometimes led to heated discussions about the show's direction. Despite this, they remained dedicated to creating a show that was not only entertaining, but also meaningful. The laughter and camaraderie among the cast are remembered fondly by those who were part of the show. In my life, I would have jumped at the chance. But now Penny needs me here, and I got to stay no matter what the dues are. Janet Jackson, known for her role as Penny on Good Times, has led a successful career in the entertainment industry. In 2011, she published a self-help book, True You, which became a bestseller in the New York Times. Esther Roll, who played Florida Evans on the show, was 25 years older than her on-screen best friend, played by Janet Dubois. Despite their age difference, the two actors shared a strong chemistry on screen. Ralph Carter, who portrayed Michael Evans on Good Times, made a public appearance at the BET Awards in 2006, joining other cast members from the show. This mini reunion was a treat for fans who have fond memories of the series. Compared to me and James, y'all didn't even work up a sweat. <laughs> Good Times, a 1974 TV series, holds a significant place in film history as one of the first to depict African-American life in a positive and realistic manner. It broke new ground by focusing on a working-class family and their experiences, contributing to the normalization of diverse representation on television. The series had a substantial impact on future filmmaking, inspiring numerous spin-offs and influencing the creation of other TV shows and movies centered on African-American families. Good Times also launched the careers of notable actors, such as John Amos and Jimmy Walker, who went on to appear in various other productions. Good Times left an indelible mark on popular culture, with its memorable characters, catchphrases, and storylines. The series continues to inspire subsequent works, including modern TV shows and movies that draw inspiration from its themes and representation of the African-American experience. In essence, Good Times served as a cornerstone for diverse representation in television and film, paving the way for more inclusive storytelling and inspiring future generations of filmmakers and actors. Biggie, oh. El Permanente. Woo. 17, what a great age. I give In the 1970s TV show Good Times, Tamu Blackwell made two appearances, first as Francie Potter on Maud, and then as Edna, who took Florida's kids hostage in Rich, is better than poor maybe. Her character's conflict with Florida was not limited to their first meeting, as they became enemies once again in the latter appearance. The show's catchphrase, Dynamite, became so popular that it led to the creation of Dynamite, a children's magazine published from 1974 to 1992. The phrase was coined by Jimmy J.J. Walker, who appeared on the cover of the magazine in April 1975. Another notable character on the show was Wanda, who was often called Weeping Wanda. Her tearful personality was a recurring theme throughout the series. In summary, Good Times featured memorable characters and catchphrases that left a lasting impact on audiences, leading to the creation of a popular children's magazine and cementing its place in TV history. The boyfriend, and he ended up in bed with JJ. <laughs> John Amos and Conchata Farrell shared the screen in three different shows, showcasing their acting range across various characters and storylines. Esther Roll, despite facing some challenges, found her experience working with Janet Dubois to be positive. In a notable episode, the character Edna's way of speaking transforms dramatically, reflecting a shift from using vernacular English to standard English by the conclusion of the episode. This change serves as a pivotal moment within the series, highlighting a broader theme of personal growth and adaptation. Angel by now? I hope so, honey. Just in case I'm gonna God bless him tonight. <laughs> John Amos decided to leave the show due to concerns that it portrayed African-American life in a negative light. His character met an untimely end in a car accident, making his departure final. Shortly after, he joined the cast of Roots. Originally, the show could have been called Great Day. Jimmy Walker, who played JJ, was hesitant to use the catchphrase dynamite, but was convinced by director John Rich. Despite objections, it was agreed that JJ would say it once per episode, which became a defining aspect of the show. Oh, JJ, I've heard a lot about you, indirectly. Let me in the early stages of Good Times, JJ's easel was a prominent feature in the living room, which was later replaced with a draftsman's board. Nathan Bookman, portrayed by Johnny Brown, was the only recurring character who became a regular. Interestingly, the family wins the lottery in both Cletus, and Rich is better than poor, maybe only to be held up by a family friend in the same episodes. 
Because he can be good. Stop you. Mario, right? Yep, it just slipped. In crafting memorable characters, actors often draw inspiration from various sources. For instance, the comedic flair of Jimmy Walker's character was influenced by Ed Norton's portrayal in a classic television show. Age differences among cast members can be surprising. John Amos played the role of a father with a small age gap between him and his on-screen son, and an even smaller gap separating him from his on-screen wife. This casting approach was a common practice in the era sitcoms. Additionally, Carl Weathers, known for his role in a famous boxing film, appeared as Calvin Brooks, showcasing his versatility across different genres. I hope they just tested melons for ripeness. <laughs> no, JJ. Hey. Bernadette Stannis gained recognition for her portrayal of Thelma Evans, a character that became a household name. Later, Janet Jackson, who joined the show as a child star, went on to achieve musical success. Her song from 1986 was used in another artist's album decades later, showing the lasting appeal of her work. Additionally, Louis Gossett Jr. and John Amos, who both appeared in the groundbreaking series Roots, shared the screen with future stars, showcasing the interconnected nature of television history. These actors not only defined their roles, but also left a mark on the industry, influencing generations to come. Ma, am I terrible? I feel in the sixth season, Jimmy Walker changed his appearance by coloring his hair brown for several episodes. Esther Roll, known for her stage work, was chosen by producer Norman Lear to play Florida Evans, first on Maude, and later on its spin-off. John Amos, another key actor, later starred as Ernie Cumberbatch in 704 Hauser, marking his second major role in a Lear production, though the show lasted for only a brief period in 1994. Hello. Behind the scenes, not all was smooth sailing. Jimmy Walker, known for his role as JJ, had a strained relationship with co-star Esther Roll. She was openly critical of his character, feeling it didn't set a good example. This tension led to her temporarily leaving the show. Interestingly, Roll's connection to her character went beyond the screen. She shared her character's last name with one of her sisters, and her first name with her birth state. In a mix-up, a streaming service lists John Amos's character by the wrong name a holdover from the character's origins in another show. This error points to the complex history of the series and its character's journey from one show to another. Get a dog! Right. <laughs> you know, on top of all the other trouble you caused around here! Good Times has been a memorable show for many, bringing laughter and heartfelt moments into homes. If you have fond memories of watching this series, share your stories with us. How did the Evans family's journey touch your life or change the way you see TV shows? Your experiences are valuable, and we'd love to hear them. Join the conversation, hit like if you enjoy reminiscing about classic shows, share this with friends who are also fans, and subscribe for more trips down memory lane. Let's keep the good times rolling and the memories alive. Share your story today.